Okay, let's talk about sensory receptor cells. Um, so there's different types. There's different ways to categorize them. One way to categorize is based on where they are in the body. So there's something called exteroceptors. This is when the stimulus I'm oh, sorry, stimulus origin is outside of the body. The external. Any guess as to what the other type is? Interoceptors. So the stimulus is originating inside the body. So we'll have examples of both, a um, little bit more of exteroceptors, so light, sound, touch, lots of outside things. Inside, the origin is going to be something happening in the body. So it could be stretch within the digestive system or the blood vessels, um, things detecting heartbeat, pH, things that are occurring within the body. It's very important for homeostasis. Okay, the second way of categorizing, that's what's based on where in the body, this one is based on the type of stimulus. This is obviously a important one. So all kinds of stimuli. So let's name the receptors and then look at what they're detecting. So we've got photoreceptors. Any ideas? Light. So we can see. So for vision, thermoreceptors detect temperature. And this could be outside or inside of the body. Chemoreceptors. These detect chemicals. And specifically, there's lots of different types. Um, could be pH in the body, could be taste molecules, could be smell, odorants. Nociceptors is pain. Mechanoreceptors detect mechanical stimuli. So that's often touch. Also can be sound waves. So sound waves. So that's a mechanical stimulus. Um, okay. And osmo receptors. These detect osmolarity. So a type of interoceptor only. Um, we'll talk about almost all of these, at least somewhat. Mechanoreceptors, we'll see a whole lot of different types. Um, actually, so I'll write a couple here. Um, tactile receptors would be for touch. Um, sound waves, what we to hearing. And then one other type I want to write here is baroreceptors. Those are for pressure. Sometimes there's subtypes, like a barometer detects pressure. Okay, and then again, these receptors, these are physical receptors that um, are going to change in shape and cause the opening of ion channels. 
um, to cause a, a neural signal in the central nervous system. The amount of the change in, in membrane potential depends on the intensity of the stimulus. So again, like a louder sound um, in the environment would be heard as louder because we're having a bigger change in our nervous system. These are all sent to different specialized areas of the brain that can process that information. We'll get to some of. Okay, one other type to classify sensory receptor cells is based on um, their structure. So whether they are um, encapsulated or simple, basically. So on the left, these include two different types. One is free nerve endings, which are also called unencapsulated, no capsule. And over here, um, also part of general senses can be capsulated. So the general senses, meaning um, most, a lot of times touch, but not only could actually be pain <clears throat> and temperature um, are the general senses. Special senses are things like vision, hearing, taste. So simple, the simplest ones are over on the left. They have just free nerve endings, right? Nothing on them, literally just the axon, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the, the terminals, it's not the axon terminals, they're more similar to dendrites. Incoming information are not surrounded by any type of tissue. Um, unipolar neuron, traveling, this information would be traveling to the central nervous system in all three of these cases. Um, this type over here is capsulated. This is still for different types of touch. So I think I'll just write that here. We'll see examples of what types of touch, meaning like stretch versus vibration, um, different types of touch that have different layers of connective tissue around them that allow them to respond to different stimuli um, based on the shape of, of this thing here. So they're more specialized. We'll get into examples of that. Okay, and then lastly, on the right, these special senses are more complex. And that's already shown here just by this sensory receptor cell. So there's a specialized cell that is connected to the sensory cell. This is two cells shown here. The other ones are just one. So there's a special receptor cell um, that's different than the neuron that is able to respond um, to something more unique. So in this case, this would be a hair cell that responds to mechanical waves photoreceptors have special proteins in them that respond to light. There's something else that this cell is doing um, and then sending the signal. So this is a synapse here, a signal to a second cell. The sensory neuron is a different cell that travels to the central nervous system. Um, so neurotransmitter would be released from, you can see them right there, synaptic vesicles, neurotransmitter released 